Welcome to another episode of the Disposable Web. I've brought yet again Brian Max here. I know injury and all. Now you've got a full blown cast going on now, but you've had good news. There's no surgery or anything like that, so you're on the road to recovery, sir. This is true, and and I will say because you know racers appreciate yeah. this. Um, I the, the, this is my second cast, and I was willing to get a new one because I, it just didn't work down here. So, of course, like all racers, I had to have it optimized. So we trimmed about, I don't know, two centimeters down here just so it fits a little bit better. Because, you know, you know, racers are always, yeah. you know, focused on making sure, like, at least I am. I, I need to be comfortable in the cockpit. So it's the same kind of thing. So this is still agony on a minute-by-minute minute basis. Yeah. But having, you know, losing that little bit of, uh, of cast material, is, it's all fiberglass, but losing a little bit of of it here makes it so much more usable. Well, and to your point, the, the, the fiberglass is, is is fairly light, but compared to some of the 3D printed stuff that's coming out now to keep your, yeah. your hand from moving, oh. it breathes, you know, you're, you're not having to do the full wrap, basically. That's yes. that's the biggest thing, you know? Um, so, I mean, yeah. in, in a couple of weeks, I get some kind of brace yeah. uh, that I'll have for a couple of weeks. I don't know. I'm, you know, given that we are in Ontario and, and you know, it's still... <laughs> It's hey, listen, on, are, are, are your, are your bones doing. healing? You know, yes, that, that's yes. the, that's the one thing, like I said, when I had my, my, my thumb uh, injury or whatnot, you do appreciate, uh, you know, some of the basic, uh, healthcare. I know we, we joke about the future of healthcare, where it needs to go. And I, I think to, yeah. to, to put an addendum to yesterday, part of it is the consultation part that I'm talking yes. about, you know, actual yes. surgery, even though you can do that remotely, you know, and all of those things, because we're getting to those surgical tables with 5G and, you know, AI uh -huh. assistance, you know, so, so anybody in the world can cut you open, basically. But mm -hmm. for the basic stuff, like snapping your bones back together or stitching you up and, and making sure that that like, yeah, I, I was thrilled that I was able to walk in, be taken care of and sent on my yes. way. Uh, but as you say, you were sent on your way, <laughs> you know, yeah, I mean, you know, the, 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 uh, you know, I don't, I don't need to, to yeah. elaborate it, but I mean, that, you know, that, you know, it was treated in an emergency and, and, and that took a while because, you know, we're in the middle of a pandemic yep. and all that. That helps. Yeah. Um, but then going back, I will say that, um, that the fracture clinic at Toronto Western is outstanding. Mm. They like, they are just fantastic. Mm. And of course, one of my doctors is a car guy. So it's always, it's always a fun conversation, yeah. but uh, no, they've, they've been fantastic. And, and um, you know, uh, like I, it's, it's the strangest thing. Unlike in the emergency, the fracture clinic, I have an appointment. I, you know, get my weekly x-rays and then i see a doctor and there's no waiting it's a it's a wonderful experience mm. so i you know I, I i don't mean to be disingenuous uh, about that but but it, you're, you're you kind know, of dealing it, with a specialist division at that point in time where you that, can that, schedule true, and it, but, you, you can count how long it's going to take oh to true degree. absolutely now it, and here's an interesting just a little anecdote yeah, yeah, this uh, apparently I'm, I'm still waiting for the bill but uh, a fiberglass cast is not covered by ohip so if you want the ohip cast you you get plaster yeah but i mean this can't like the materials here are a time saver so i don't understand why because like this is not old, old, old school thinking old school thinking yeah. it, it's more uh, because the, would you like fries with that, that that's it because this is this went on remarkably quick yeah um far quicker than they could have yeah. um with plaster but yet this is still a billable thing I don't know. Maybe it's a revenue thing. I don't know, but it it certainly was, was hey, more efficient than we, when we when we talk about old school healthcare versus what needs to be emerging healthcare. Uh, one of the main reasons why I want to go remote for consultations, and I'll be very specific. Just give me someone to talk to on a regular basis about my health. No different than that. I know this is not what we're going to be talking about. It's a continuation of the episode that no one listened to, but it was a good chat. But you know. Part of it is the parking. I cannot afford the racket that is yes. having to drive there, take time off, because you're now costing me money. The second I'm not here, I'm negative. Now you're adding more negatives for absolutely no reason at yes. all. Okay. Yeah. And then having yeah. me to do it over and over again? No. Like, and, we and are past that point. I truly believe that that this pandemic will, will put so much pressure on that to change because they're now dealing, like, the entire flat and the curve is our industry, the way it was built, cannot handle you. Therefore, yeah. we need to flatten the curve. No, the other alternative is change your fucking structure 
Exactly. Okay. And you'll be able to scale. That's right. You know, but that that's not the conversation for today, but that was, no, no, we, no, we got to no. have a, a little bit of, of a ramp because, you know, yeah, so Lord knows, enough, enough for the medical updates. Enough about the medical update. But on that note, uh, what we want to focus on today is kind of related to the topic because it's the in-person versus not in-person kind of aspect of what we're talking about just like we're doing this before like right now normally you'd yeah. be coming to my house well not you specifically but you'd be coming over to my house to do these things and you yeah. know there'd be a beer in each other's hands and, and whatnot but we're having to exactly we're having to do not, this for not my, beer not, not beer, beer but beer. still uh but it's one of those things where we have to adapt and and some of it is having to do more virtual you know and yes. you have been in the auto industry for quite some time uh or yeah. at least not necessarily in the industry for an extremely long time, but you've definitely been aware of the industry and, and influenced by said industry for a very yes. long time. So yes. we have the world of uh, conferences, for lack of a better term, or exhibits or exhibitions or, or any large gathering. You know, we're talking the, the, the convention hall is packed, the Sky Dome is packed, you know, they're connected. We're talking, you know, the car shows, stuff like that, right? Huge, okay. huge. But then you also have the individual uh, uh, Detroit reveal of a particular make, mall, or whatnot. And, you know, so that's a smaller group of people. Sometimes part of it is during a large exhibit. But point being is you're typically pulling these people to an event in person, physically. Yeah. Yeah, there's the pain. I could see it in your eyes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah to a location and you've been doing that for a while and i think the auto industry has probably been the one that has had the biggest budget outside of certain telecoms like salesforce and whatnot to really do it well like yeah. you know salesforce will bring in metallica you know for further sales for dreamforce right you yes know, uh, yeah. you know i I know that that John Cougar Mellencamp would be brought in in Detroit back in the '80s as an example, but you know it, it's they've got the money to do it right, to give you an, yeah. an experience, and to have you walk yes. away hopefully as an influencer. Or, you know, well, or, I mean, you know, the, the whole those events where are or have been designed and very extensively designed so that you know your 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 average member of the media leaves with a very positive impression about the brand and the product. Got gotcha. you. It has to be because it, 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 you're the one that. Money well, you know, I, I've joked about this, and we said this earlier. There, there, nothing beat, and this still applies today, although restrictions change the math here. But nothing beat yeah. taking a group of people, be it kids in a school auditorium or a bunch of uh, of zealots in whatever industry you want to pick, bringing yeah. them all together, giving them an experience, giving them you know something that they'll talk about, tying it to some form of brand, product, whatever, and have them go home. You know what I mean? With swag that, that, yes. you know, like whenever I would go to an IT conference, I would be killed if I did not come back with 20 odd items to distribute yes. to my staff. And, and, you know, I, I'll, I'll show you yeah. one of my yeah. favorite pieces. Of oh swag. my God, that's gorgeous. You know, and, yeah. and I'm a big fan of the product. Um, so, you know, when I was, when I was uh, there, I made sure I, I, at the event for, for that thing. Uh, I made sure that you know, when they handed it to me, I graciously accepted. And, and I mean, I love that size of notebook anyway, so it's it's perfect. But that's, you know, and this travels with me, like tons of people see it. It's a conversation that's starter. Whole, that's exactly And that's a that's brand, it. you know, that like as soon as you see that red R, yeah. it, it, you know, it says a lot about you, the individual, as well as, you know, what you choose to follow. But that, that was kind of the point from things that we would wear to, to uh, print material that would come out of these things. To be able to get that mass of people in a location uh, is a challenge, okay? Both from a, 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 not a logistics point of view, a running point of view, a cost to put something like that is huge. Yes. Now you have a scenario, and like I said, the pandemic accelerated a lot of what we talk about, but let's be honest, they were there for the last 10 years and a lot of people were pushing for it and the need wasn't there. So. You know, I, I tend to focus on the last 10 years pre-pandemic because that to me was the match. You know, all of a sudden work from home became a thing. Uh, you know, things are going to start accelerating because of this, right? Uh, yeah, but prior so to I, that, I they just, were there. Go for it. I, I just got off the phone with uh, with some family in the States. Mm -hmm. And um, my one of my cousins, uh, who's, you know, roughly our age, um, has uh, been told that they are absolutely working from home. Uh, for the next six months, no question. It's like at minimum, you're like plan to work from home for six yeah. months. 
Well, you have an entire industry uh, of pre-made home offices now that are being sold. You're going to have an Ikea brand that's going to come out like crazy in the next little while if they're smart. Uh, There there are already a couple of plays out there um, where where they were optimized for work from home. And their timing was perfect. They were like... They were they were launched six months prior to all of this, and I'm sure they just exploded. But it was basic, you know, the basics like a, a you know workstation and and all just that that basic tool set that everybody needs if they're not set up at home. Like yeah. you and I, we've got our full setups at home, and and I love it that way because I mean I love being able to take this laptop and work anywhere in the world, and that's lovely. But I also like coming. Uh, to my home office, oh. putting it you on got the, the music workstation. going. You got stuff that, around you. It's an ambiance. Yes, you do work. That, that's right. And um, but these guys had that full setup that most people certainly didn't have at home. Yeah. Um, so you know, you desk, chair. You know, the the dining you know, room whatever. table uh, is what, <laughs> versus the dining room table is kind of yeah. But desk, chair, <laughs> right. flush mounted to a wall, typically. Uh, yes. Integrated lighting in a lot of cases now that they're that's, because it, it's a three dollar add on to to put that into the build. When you think about it, right. it makes like you know just we were talking about this earlier. And, you know, I'll do this live with light, without light, oh, with wow. light, without light. <laughs> okay, it's you. You tell. I would like to have a Zoom meeting with you, sir, with light. <laughs> okay, so yeah, three dollars. You know, but right. you, you, yeah. you like for you and I, we, we've evolved our setup because I, I've worked from home for 10 you know years now. And you, you've yes. always been kind of like a freelance as long as I've known you in that yeah, sense. It's, it's been uh, it's been uh, 12 years. Yeah. So so similar time frames that, yeah. that we've left corporate, yeah. uh, you know, yeah. and I, I've just now shifted to, to the stand up desk model, which this is part of. Uh, and that's just done a huge thing to my back. If I was still in the, in the corporate world sitting Oh my God, I, I I can't, like, I don't get it. In any case, virtual, yeah. I know we, we sidetrack, but once again, yeah, it's, part, so, it's part of the dialogue. Yeah. What's it, the, what it, was, it is, but yeah. I mean, that's that's uh, that's how we've got here. We've yeah. gotten here is, is, you know, people have, uh, the, the whole nature of work, including mm. conferences, has yep. fundamentally changed. Yep. And in, you know, in my automotive media <sighs> world, that's changed in some very interesting ways. So here's here's a great, here's one example What's happening in the U.S. and, and of course, Canada is, is slow because we've got smaller budgets and don't have access to vehicles. But uh, what's happening in different parts of the United States is that manufacturers are still making vehicles available, but it's to one member of the media or to if you've, you know, you're like me and have a camera uh, operator. But they're making them available to one person at a time. And, you, you know, it might be a drive or whatever. And then, of course, when you return the car, it's all sanitized and, and, and all this stuff. Um, and then they just rotate through, you know, media. Um, Physically was, in one, one city or location, I would suspect. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, my, my home away from home, Southern California, that's yep. exactly what's going on. Basically, every week, that's what's happening with, with new vehicles there. So this week, I'm uh, attending an event, was invited. And it's two new products that aren't even close to ready yet, but I'm I'm excited to getting there because when they hit the ground, they're going to be pretty mm-hmm. awesome. So um, it's important to have content really early. So that's what I'm doing. And uh, what they've done is they've given me a window of two hours to shoot everything that I need, and then that's you know that that's the time frame. Or that's the, I mean that's the construct in which I have to to do everything I need to do, and that includes interviewing an executive from the the car maker. So I'm going to get everything done, um, but it's. But would it's you would you be, consider that considerably more compressed than it used to be? Uh, I mean, I've or done, is that just I've availability? Done, is what was availability like? Uh, they they asked what I'd like, and I know it would be extremely difficult to do everything properly within an hour. Mm. And they know I'm shooting video, so I asked for two hours. Okay, and you know, wasn't wasn't a problem. And I've got a relationship with um, with that executive anyway, so uh, I've I've known him for years and interviewed him at other uh, car makers. So we've got we've got a good rapport, and, and it'll go well with the video. Now, is this easily. one that you're opting to do in person, or is this one that you're doing virtual? Uh, so I'm attending this, but I'm other than the executive that I'm interviewing and the, my PR contact, it's just the three of us in that space. Yeah. Yeah. So, 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 so you're, you're able to, to, to get the information out, still have that face to face dialogue, try to get that, that inside scoop that you would struggle because this is what I find that that's really noticeable when you compare the two is 
the power of the bump someone used to describe it to me when you actually just bump into a person and, and the stu- yeah. stuff that comes out from that power of the bump conferences especially you know that pull together an industry uh, networking is huge so you can get yes. the same content out to people in a virtual setting whether or not it's a pre-recorded interview or a live Q&A or whatnot where audience interaction is there but those people that are in that same room are not and it goes that, back to that that that, that, that that true sense of getting a group together yes is got to be physical in that sense because uh, we haven't mastered the rest of it. We've tried VR. We've tried, you know, uh, persona-based game-style uh, events. You know, Fortnite. Yeah. You know, for for live events. You know, those things yes. were great. Uh, you know, because you immerse in the character. But if you're a one-off to come into that world and leave the world, is you really you're spending more of the time trying to figure it out versus interacting with people to start with. Yeah, Whereas that, just walking that, into a room. Yeah, I mean, and and that's you know, I mean. As much as as much as I you know love the 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 cars and and, and my work and everything else, what I love about attending car shows and you know all parts of the world was you know running into people, meeting new people, and running into friends. Yeah. And it, you know it doesn't matter what interest industry you're in, that no longer exists. And I remember you know previous lives, previous um, jobs, whatever. It was, you know the same thing happened. You had those conferences and you had those events where you would attend and you know. And see some people and, and everything else and, and um, you created those relationships and grew those relationships and uh, you know this week for example somebody I know from uh, from fundamentally auto shows mm. um, reached out to me this week and said hey there's a car I'm looking at in Toronto do you mind having a look at it and you know this is somebody I would never have met otherwise but that's and and it that relationship comes strictly from uh, being at, at car shows together and just like bumping into one another. Yeah. And that you know what we've got now is is a period of what what's it going to be a year a year and a half. They're not they're not saying we... concerts until twenty twenty two. Okay, so yeah, so put exactly. concerts in the same category of any mass group. Like you know I I, I run. I help run, I should say, uh, a fairly decent luncheon every year uh, locally, um, you know, affected simply as that, you know, uh, yep. so, so we're already, you know, doing plan B. But, you know, to me that that virtual versus non-virtual, like I'm, I'm a very digital person, how I am digitally versus how I am physically uh, depending on what state I am in, how many drinks I've had, who you are, uh, my social, you know, all of those factors. Like I'm an introvert yep. at the end of the day. My recharge rate is massive. But you put me in a pure digital space. Uh, and I'll use this as an analogy because I think it plays into it. You brought up relationships. Um, I play a video game. Uh, it's called Fallout 76. I got no problems. It's um, been maligned since the launch like people hated it hated it hated. and i've been playing it since day one pretty much every day okay but what was nice about it is uh it was a world that was free of decision meaning you decided what you were do you go left do you go right do you talk to this person do you interact with this person do you go this way so everybody started at the same point and then just there's your world and it takes place in West Virginia. So picture West Virginia with 32 people on the server and that's it. You know, you, you define your story within the story. So it's a great immersive place. And to me, it was no different than going to a digital conference back in the days where I would do an avatar based, you know, conference or whatnot. Here's my avatar. I'm walking through this world. And the persona that I took in that world was that of a quartermaster. Okay, I would be the guy that would interact with people. I would collect the junk from all these other people and I'd lug it around. And if all of a sudden this newcomer would come around, I'd be that guy that would go, hey, let me set you up. Okay, and I I did that so well that I joined a guild like we all do eventually. And you're you understand gaming to a degree. And this is part of part of that digital virtual space. None of this is real. Right. None of this is. I I totally understand. that. Yes. So. I'm all of a sudden now the quartermaster for an entire online army. We're talking, you know, 600 (laughs) people in the Facebook group. Uh, I have the dedicated outpost where people come to my server, to my character, whenever they need whatever, okay, or need to offload because I was that guy. And, you know, we're talking huge, huge. In any case, played that for the longest time, still playing it to this day, but 
about a year ago, uh, one of my friends, never met him in real life, died in real life. Okay, motorcycle accident, sudden, extremely sudden. Okay, uh, this is a guy that, that I interacted with on a daily basis. Never met him, mm-hmm. hardly mm-hmm. talked to them because I typically don't run a mic when I'm playing. I'm typically mic free. Okay, so okay. it's all motions, hand signals, built up relationships and chats, you know, offline. Mm-hmm. Uh, the yeah. occasional ver- verbal. In any case, he dies. Uh, we uh, do this huge, huge online event for with him online. Uh, I actually wrote about it. If you go to my LinkedIn and you do a search, Uh, for a story about the quartermaster, you'll come across it. And it tells Mm -hmm. the story of that day. In any case, all that to say, here's a guy that I've never met in my life. Mm -hmm. A year goes by to last weekend. The game's on Game Pass, which means it's free to anybody that has the Microsoft Game Pass. So all these new players are starting to come online in this game. All these level ones, two, threes are populating the world again because all these new people are coming in because they're able to play the game for free. Two of them happen to be the son of the guy that died a year ago. Oh, no kidding. I am now interacting with them in game for the last five days, being the quartermaster that I was way back when, just to these two. I gave them like 10,000 money, you know, ammo, armor, right, right. weapons, yeah. plans, what sent them on their way. You know what I mean? Never will meet these people, don't have much of a common relationship with sure. anybody in the family, couldn't even tell you what city they're in to be honest but digital virtual yes okay yes. and, and that you can get but that's not a scenario where you just walk into an online conference for an hour and walk yeah. out that that was a year and a half of networking and relationship like i was known to these people these kids right. knew me you know the, the, right. so, and it's like i bear you know okay here you yeah. are you know uh, mm-hmm. Do you need anything type of thing, right? So, so sure. it, it's kind of cool to watch them play the game, to be perfectly yeah. honest, you know. But all that to say, you would not have that necessarily in a physical space because all of those physical boundaries that come into play, race, yeah. division, you know, yeah. the article I wrote, uh, and when you read it, you'll, you'll get it more, is what is this character that you see here? Is he male or female? Is, is he older or young? Is he male, you know, black or white? You know, you don't know. Nope. All of these people that I was a QM for that would come and mm-hmm. buy were from all over the world, all walks of life. You don't assume, but the second nope. you walk into a physical world where you're now not dealing with avatars, but actual, yes. yeah. now all of a sudden racism comes into play, sexism comes into play. You know, so so all that to say that there is a parallel there where we do lose certain things in that virtual. And part of it is our own inhibitions Mm -hmm. to a degree, our own preconceived notions, you know, but I think it takes longer to develop those same relationships in the digital space because you don't have that same attention span. There, you mean, know, an hour at the bar with you over drinks at a conference versus trying to get that same hour anywhere else. Right. You know, but I mean, as you know, there's so much of communication that is nonverbal. Yeah. Right. And that's what that's what spending you know time in the physical presence of other people really does, because, you know, there, there's there's so much communication that is nonverbal. It can't be, you know, typed, whatever. And I mean, this is this is as close as, as we're going to get. Well, we're only only getting the audio, the video. Yes. We're not getting any of that physical tension that might be in the air, you know, but you, no, you don't, you, you sense it, but you don't, you know, you know what I mean? Um, absolutely. You know, but yeah, like if, if I turned off the video and we did this just on audio, it'd yes. be a completely different than me trying to make eye contact with you. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I mean, so I, I do a, I do a regular radio show here in, in Toronto and we can't record in the studio it's it is significantly more difficult to do it over you know the phone or skype or whatever whatever tools we're using rather than in person because we don't have those we don't have any physical cues anymore Mm. like it's it's kind of like flying blind it is it is remarkably difficult and we've been doing this for a while and it's still like every time it's a challenge so you know i've recording tomorrow and it's like I'm, I'm thinking like we we just need to get better at at handing off to you know whether it's a guest or a co-host or whatever and it's 
it is so difficult without that that physical presence of one another. Well, you also have uh, the issue of technical latency coming into play, where sometimes there's a delay in terms of me hearing you. You know, we've seen it in the older texts, and if you're on Wi-Fi or whatnot, there's a natural tendency when you're in the stage where you are missing that handoff. You know, yeah. because the audio sometimes is throwing you off to start with, or the video has a thing, or you're distracted, or you know. But to your point, whenever I do a podcast, if I'm not face to face with the person, the quality of the interview changes dramatically. I can have them sitting on the sofa in the basement with me being in the you know the the, the chair behind and have all the same audio qualifications. It just wouldn't be the same, I don't think. And same thing, I love doing things live. Because, you know, when you get that live feedback from the audience, whether or not it's mm -hmm. two people or a, a large room, it changes. And even just standing versus sitting, I'm finding, changes, you know, the behavior oh, yeah, no question. and how I do stuff. So all of these are physical elements that are removed when you are watch. Okay, that's it. You know, so, so yeah. we are physically able to get the content out there. But here's my question is, when you walk away from one of those events, are you provided with the same level of quote unquote swag that facilitates the promotion of that experience? Yes, you can do a share, you know, right. uh, okay, yeah. or uh, here's, here's our, yeah. you know, but let's be honest. But I think that that issue of scaling that secondary audience, that third audience, that fourth audience, you know, uh, true viral, if lack a better statement, um, yeah. you know, is, I don't think you can pull it off. I don't think you're able to pull the same amount of people together. I think anybody that signs up for these things, typically, I think, mostly watches the, the post show. They'll, they'll, they'll be there for a bit because uh, we did an event. It was based out of Boston and around midway through the day. You could start seeing the the uh, the tiredness kick in, people yes. having competitive projects on the go, and the yeah. questions started coming in. I missed this bit. When can I rewatch it? And that all of started course. around lunchtime. Okay. Yes. Uh, we had a yes. late start, but the point being, you know, three hours into it, if that had been a physical event where people are literally stuck at a resort, and you are, yeah. you know, focused, completely different scenario. Oh, absolutely. You, you can't, you can't, you know, just turn over here and, and, you know, do some work or yeah. whatever, you know, pick up your phone quite as easily. I mean, at least, at least in the physical room, you know, picking up your phone and, you know, being distracted for, for a couple of seconds might, you can get away with that, but you know, you, well, your eyes you, are you on can't you. do that for, yeah, all eyes are on you. You can't, you can't certainly can't do that. Well, and I think that's kind of what I'm the getting at door. is yeah. going back to that connected, disconnected, a virtual event is truly capable of connecting far more. You know, if you were to take the next generation of live aid, okay, and it's not, you know, Bob Gendoff at, you know, Wembley and just limited to Wembley in terms of where people are, are presenting. And, you know, they've done that. But, you know, we've never really truly done a global internet event. No, uh, that's right. We're close. We're so close. We've yes. proven that we don't break the internet. We, we have put more strain on the internet in the last four months and it's survived quite nicely. Thank you. That's right. Okay. Yes. Uh, but at the end of the day, that large scale event that you go back and go, oh my God, I remember I went to that one show and it was digital. You know, like I don't have that. You know, yeah. I remember listening to a U2 concert when Twitter was big and watching the Twitter live chat for the first time. And that was the first time I had a global experience at a show, meaning, you know, mm -hmm. we're all listening to the same live thing. You're getting yep. the conversations from around the world. And this is like 2008 time frame, um, okay. you know, so that that's there. But compare that to the physical being at a concert or, you know, it's... It's, We're not there it yet. Is I don't have the same experience. And, you know, there's, there's this week, there's a whole lot of chatter because um, for the uh, Indianapolis 500, mm. they, uh, they announced yesterday that they are going to have crowds at 25% capacity for the event. Because they can spread it and, out. It's big enough. Yeah. Oh, it's, I mean, it's enormous. If, if, uh, I don't know if you've been around, but oh, holy moly it's a big it, it, it's a universe on to us i've not i've not had the pleasure but i've had enough experience to know what i'm talking you know what you're talking yeah, about yeah, for exactly. lack of a term. yeah no, so it's, it's like the it's, grand canyon you won't really know until you're there but you get yeah, it yes um uh, and i mean you know there's lots of iconic um imagery there and, and, and everything but uh so 
th- this week they they made the announcement that they are uh, do, they're allowing spectators at twenty five percent capacity. So this is interesting. But of course, with a quick view of my and Twitter, the, the car Twitter world, there of course are some opinion havers who think that this is a bad idea. And I I disagree. I mean, first of all, it's their sandbox. They can do what they want. It, it is a private facility is it not it absolutely is it's owned by roger pence it's one big private facility yeah so he owns the facility he owns the series the championship uh he owns the and all of the property physical and and virtual right i got a beer can signed by him downstairs oh do you really (laughs) i i met him for the first time at a a, uh, uh, a private uh airport when we were here here flying out going a race weekend the the guy the guy the guy is a business genius that's all i can say Uh, that's yeah, please continue. Sure. So, you know, my view is they can do what they want. And it, they, you know, it's, it's a private facility. And, and here's the thing. There's so much tradition around that event. There are so many families that get together and have attended that event. Why would you, why would you turn them away? And, you know, the, 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 the alternate argument is, well, there was such a, there was such an opportunity on the table for this amazing digital experience breaking new ground and all this nonsense it's like but that does not preclude the other you don't necessarily need to it's not an either or uh, you know like motorsports tv you know you know you you know the guys at motorsports they did a fabulous Mm -hmm. job doing some of the live uh, live stuff that they've done in the last uh, year or so you know absolutely and 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 all of this can happen and and you know it's and you know if anybody's concerned about the you know the pandemic the the physical access points at that place are are significant there yeah. are, there are plenty of them they're spacious like you're outdoors you're not indoors it's, yeah there's it's, like you know if you're but to your point you, you you need you know we've seen a few races now where as you say that the, there's no crowds in the stands you know my, my favorite video is daniel ricardo in f1 walking through the area where the fans would be he's high-fiving nothing He's just, got, yeah, you know, whatever. I didn't see that. Oh, it's, it's just great. beautiful because that, that's yeah. that's Ricardo, right? Uh, yeah. But my point being is, and we know, you know, uh, many of our friends, you know, who, who race uh, still in this series, I think something like IMSA, which let's be honest, mode, most road racing, uh, 25 capacity at most of those rovals, piece of cake. Most yeah. most people were infield anyways in, in most of these yes. type of events, right? Now, when you get into a NASCAR where the, the, the stadiums are full, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? So, yeah, yes. I, I would say that there's absolutely nothing wrong with the lesser, no, I don't let, I didn't mean lesser series, but, you know, lesser size series um, mm-hmm. to, to, to use that space, no different than how they're spacing out their garages. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And they're all complying with local laws, like the, um, the IndyCar race that's... Yeah. Uh, they're breaking at, uh, far uh, less uh, rules than, than the teenagers that go out partying on a weekend. I'm not trying to be make point, but my point being is there's, there's there are structures that we can put in place to bring physical back because I don't think that that industry and I'm talking about multiple industries can yeah. survive until 2022. You know, uh, Williams would not be a team if if Formula One did not come back into play this year. They had invested so much in up undoing what they did the last few years to be a mid pack team again that they 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 bankrupted themselves and needed to race. Yes, you know what I mean. Uh, We Mm -hmm. would not have a Williams team, one of the most iconic names, you know, in in modern racing, because of this pandemic. You know. And and I, you know, I and being, of course being a motorsports fan, I I love the fact that that there's you know there's motorsport on television, and you know sports fans uh, have not much else to watch other than golf. So I think it's wonderful. It goes back to when when we had the '80s '90s where we had motorsports thrown at us during the players era and stuff. You know when when, when the tobacco broadcasting, for lack of a better term, uh, was in play. Uh, yeah, you could turn on the TV. The the amount of sports dictates so much to so much side media look at the size of most papers these days now that there's no sports they dwindled oh yeah there's just nothing to talk about so to be that 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 industry that can be out there safe Mm -hmm. and fully diverse to the indy 500 should be 
an icon of what can be possible by following both local laws and truly having the budget to truly making it a global. Like, what what are the manufacturers that go there? You tell me that they cannot turn that into something that is just the internet event that we were talking about a half hour ago. Of course, they, they you know you they know? Can do that as well. They, and and this is this is a great opportunity for you know speaking about this event yeah. to do an amazing in person experience for those people that are going to be well, they're the VIPs. Attend. Yeah. And then, you know, everybody else who wants to, you know, experience it in on whatever digital platform, it's a it's a great opportunity. So it's it, to me, it's not an either or this is this is a case where, you know, uh, where the, the 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 event itself can uh, can can be both physical and virtual in a very unique way. Yeah. The, the reality in a lot of these ones as well, it, it, you know, not not to, to dwindle on this point as well, is there are certain jobs that are associated with a physical event that, that scale yeah. in size that do not scale the same way in a digital. So th- that's why a digital can be s- such a cost saver. But there is a real world implication that there is a lot of people that would normally be employed for those race weekends, as an example, won't be needed. Mm-hmm. You know, because you're basically just having a couple of hospitality sections at this stage, for lack of a better statement. Um, if, if at all. If I mean, at all. I don't know what the, what the local laws, but I mean, here, um, uh, you know, like in Ontario, they're, they're not. I mean, there's, there's regional racing, there's club racing, but there's no professional racing yeah. uh, to, to speak of. And, and uh, I heard in Quebec, even for club racing, you're allowed to have one crew member with you. Yeah. So, I mean, that kind of precludes anything. I mean, that would preclude... You know, when, when I was racing all the time, that would preclude my ability to, to perform at my best because I, I needed more than one person to, yeah. to run the car. Well, you, you look at someone like Carl, who we both know and have seen evolve his team from three guys in a, in a, in a, in a truck with a flatbed to, to right. what it is now. Um, yes. You know, I, I didn't get to experience the what it is now, but I can definitely tell you I experienced the what it was before, you know. Uh, <laughs> yes. yes. And it, I loved it. I loved it, but that 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 yeah. was it. You had about three, four people, you know what I mean. But even then, yeah. uh, you couldn't do it with less than that unless you were truly just you know club racing where you're you're doing your own tire and like well, like we do <laughs> back in the yeah, day. Yeah, I mean there, I, you know, I mean I, I've been in that world and yeah. there's just like it, if you want to participate, you can do that. If you want to perform at your best and and you know actually win, then you can't. You no, just you, you it's like action. everything else. It's how do I want to say this? Uh, Lando Norris, uh, who's a Formula One racer right now, had a picture recently where he's actually working with the mechanics on his own car after after the race because he was an intern back in the day. Okay, so he's actually been trained to be what he's doing, right? And there's something to be said about the old racers that would work on their car. But now, yes. like I said, it's such a complicated world, especially at the high level. No, the second that you're out of that car, you're doing something that is not car related in many cases. That, you know? That's right. And, and you can't. Today... Today, even at the, the highest level of, of club racing mm-hmm. and the lowest level of professional racing, they're fundamentally the same. And you need you need a team yeah. to you know to, to operate. And, and to, to be limited to that, as you say, even though it's an outdoor. But by the time, let's be honest, by the time that changes, you're now into the winter season. So, you know. Exactly. Ice racing. Oh, God. <laughs> I know, I know. Okay, on that note, sir, okay. I'll, I'll talk to yes. you later, okay? 